<laughs> Find yourself, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so back in July, I was at a crossroads and making a career decision. It was a tough call, so I decided to go on a wellness retreat to Koh Samui, where in isolation, hopefully I would find answers. This is Bikasa, where I decided would be the host of my retreat. But that one is our web plan, Ashala. Mm -hmm. And we walk past here up there. Okay. But we have a shortcut, you can walk up to the stair here and come back to the front deck here, okay? The island's already a famous wellness destination, so there were so many different options, but I picked this place because I wanted the focal point to be yoga and self-mastery, and this was the place for it. Here's a little courtyard. My room is right in front of the beach. So this is the room that I'm in. I originally booked this place called Lotus Pad, but they upgraded it to this unit, Prana Cabana, because of the renovations they're doing. And I have the best view of all the units here, right in front of the private beach. And then on here we have our bathroom. These units were built only this year. So everything is modern, new, clean, everything I could possibly ask for during my wellness trip. And let's try stepping out to the patio. How do you open? I'm just trying to, okay, this is hard. Um, oh, I see, okay. Ooh. So there is a little patch of the beach that you can see. I mean, a wellness retreat full of yoga classes and massages, what more could you ask for? <laughs> Maybe you can't, maybe you get halfway there. You find your way, you be there present in your own practice. So nice. Together, deep breath in. It's so visible how important mind-body connection is. You lose control of your thoughts, you start losing control of your body. And it looks like that is what's happening here. I'm almost embarrassed to say I've been practicing yoga for seven years now, but it looks like I have a lifetime to go to perfect my practice if perfection is attainable. Thank you. 
high. Keep your eyes closed. The movements slow and mindful. Eventually, find your way back into a seated position. Whenever you land in your seat. So I just got out of my first practice at Vikasa and I just wanted to say a few words against this beautiful background. I was enrolled in a class called Flow by instructed by Michael who is from Australia I think and it was a wonderful class. I struggled through half of the poses. I loved every minute of it. Looks like I'm out of practice a little bit. So more the reason for me to get back into shape mentally, physically, and hopefully the class I'm taking tomorrow morning will be easier. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm a yoga teacher here at Vikasa in Koh Samui in Thailand. Uh, I've been teaching here for about five years. I'm originally from Australia, but Samui is home now. Mm -hmm. How did you discover Vikasa originally? Uh, someone at my like home studio in Melbourne recommended it to me. Wow. And I just came here on, on a holiday. Um, okay. And that was five years ago, never left. Mm -hmm. And then can I ask like your personal favorite style of yoga? Yeah, so I'm uh, probably my favorite style would be like a vinyasa, mm. um, but a flow with like long holds. I like to flow, but I like to hold. Gotcha. Uh, Picasa is the best place, in my biased opinion, to just come, uh, be on holiday by yourself, practice yoga, uh, be in the beautiful nature that we have here. Mm -hmm. Find yourself, maybe, mm -hmm. um, the ideal place for a yoga holiday. I, I will see you tomorrow morning. See you for it was nice meeting you. Okay. A group of us students talked with the instructor at the end of the class, and a lot of them seemed to be instructors from the States, Australia, some Europeans, basically all, all over the world, as you probably saw. Many of these guests stay for a few weeks at a time, even up to a couple months. So you really get to know each other and form the sense of community. I wish I was here for much longer. I think the next time I'll at least book for two weeks. I'll bring my mother along because she's a yogi as well. She's gonna love this. Next week? Is this the same thing or do you change menu? Yeah, I change. Wow, okay. Before I move on, I have to acknowledge this Life Cafe. Even though I'm not a vegan, I do love a good plant-based meal and will take up every opportunity to try out a new place that serves it. If you recall, I used to live in LA where there's no shortage of good vegan food. But the vegan dishes served during the breakfast and dinner buffet, as well as every a la carte I've ordered, was heavenly. I just realized the skin is also made of rice paper instead of the usual. You have to try these vegan dumplings. Unsurprisingly, the head chef is renowned for being Europe's best raw food chef winner. He's always on site during these service times and actively developing new recipes that no wonder every dish was exquisite. What's different about a wellness retreat from a normal vacation goes beyond the all-inclusive yoga classes and health forward meals. I think the greatest difference is a sense of community. When you travel with your friends and family, stay at a hotel, you know, you usually stay within the group you came with. Sometimes you'll interact with the staff on board, but not really with the other guests. Well, at a wellness retreat, usually there's programs that happen in cohorts anywhere from a couple of days to months. And you get to spend a lot of time with the same group of people, strangers, but people who share a common goal, which is a desire to improve yourself through practice. And that can all come out to be an incredibly bonding experience. But since I was just visiting for a couple of days, I signed up for a personal program where I just floated around in different classes. But I never felt alone because there were lots of opportunities to mingle. Like you can't tell from this footage, but at this dinner table, there were a group of yoga instructors from the States and Australia that I became well acquainted with. 
Interestingly, they used to work in finance, tech, consulting before transitioning their career to become yoga instructors. And as a solo traveler, it was the right balance of solitude and belongingness. One other thing is, even though it's really dark and I have to walk a little bit to get to my room, I know it's really safe because there's security staff on property all night. And I just said hello to one. So we are in good hands. Apparently these lights are boats that capture squids. And funny enough, the first night I thought it was Gatsby's light, but mystery solved. That's what the green lights are in the ocean. Anyways, you might be wondering what the outcome of the retreat was. Was it life-changing? Was there a self-discovery? While staying at Vikasa, I often caught glimpses of the founder of the place, Costa, according to the staff that I talked to, and also this booklet in my room that outlined his life story. He was born in the Soviet Union and raised in Europe and Canada, and his diverse upbringings led him to a life that is full of travel. So he went on various yoga excursions from the Himalayan ashrams to healing camps in India. So he basically covered all the best yoga schools across the globe. But it wasn't until when he came to Koh Samui that he felt like he's found his home. And the rest is history. As somebody who always tried to find that sense of a home, I felt like I was in that particular stage in life where I have to explore the Himalayas. Figuratively speaking, although if it actually happened, I would be delighted. But in order for that to happen, I first need to take a leap of faith. So I decided to go for what I was afraid of going for. As I said in the beginning of this video, the trip was about finding answers to a difficult decision. And the answer I found was courage. Mm -hmm. 